the organization of the economy in an anarchist society or during the stage of revolutionary transition towards anarchy. Essential Libertarian Social Revolution. The organization of the economy of libertarian background, orientation and purpose and its development and unfolding makes a radical change of the capitalist and state system indispensable. This change necessarily implies abolishing and overcoming both and laying the fundamental foundations of the new economy and of the anarchist society or of a democratic socialism on the march towards it. Neither the anarchist nor even the libertarian communist society is going to be realized by the art of enchantment neither in a day, nor in a synchronized way on the world level, in a given phase of universal human history. The social revolution will not be simultaneous in each and every country in the world at the same time. Nor can it be uniform, based on a single type or pattern, since geographical, climatic, ethnic, demographic conditions, industrial development, natural wealth, the existence or not of raw materials, agricultural possibilities, environmental conditions, mentality and culture, etc., will influence its constructive variants, even under the determining influence of the sap and the libertarian orientation, causing that, according to its density and the specific characteristics indicated, they appear, not only universally but also in each country proper. The system and its new structures under multifaceted, multiple and pluralistic profiles and aspects, in search of an incessant improvement and harmonious balance. But the essential characteristics of anarchist or anarchist society and of the practical and effective means and procedures to reach it, must be manifested with strong and clear guidelines to take hold of reality and open a deep furrow in it, with a view to the fruitful emergence of the free tomorrow, starting today. The purpose of the new libertarian economy and of the anarchist society must be the freedom and well-being of each and every person that compose it, in an environment of social equality and human solidarity. To achieve this end, the disappearance of the state under all its forms of dictatorship, even if it is called transitory, of all the authoritarian institutions of capitalism is indispensable, of private property of all forms and procedures of exploitation and oppression of person by person, of social classes, ranks, hierarchies and privileges, of the employee. Although the social revolution in a country cannot go, unfortunately, in its early stages, beyond certain determined conditions that will inevitably impose the characteristics of the country itself and the means that it has at the time it breaks out or occurs, at least in the economic order. Since the globally considered economy is not created or developed in an instant, from the first moment, imprinting its fertile footprint and its firmly defined will to achieve, on the part of anarchists, the concern must be to translate into reality the maximum substantiality, achievements and libertarian development. And the motto should be, freedom, bread, clothing, housing, culture and recreation for all from each according to his means to each according to his needs. It will be necessary to destroy and sweep away all interior obstacles, survivals of the past of authoritarianism and exploitation, that oppose the free organization of the new society. And it will not be possible to count much on the world revolutionary solidarity supporting the social revolution of a country that is, especially if it is presented with a definite anarchist predominant typology. All aid from the internationally dominant blocs will tend towards satellitization. And it must also be said that in any profound revolutionary change there is a period of economic stagnation, of experimental trial, of adjustment of the most suitable structures to the objectives and aims pursued, which puts the revolutionary transforming current and its value to the test. And capacity for accomplishment and construction. Ensure the existence and free functioning of the company. From the first moment it is necessary to ensure production, supply, increase performance, productivity, without exploiting the productive working class, without exhausting it, without imprisoning it in alienating work standards. The immediate triumph of the social revolution and its consolidation and the future phases of its progressive development will depend largely on the workers' own social, economic, cultural and ideological training on what we could call specific revolutionary and libertarian capacity, 
individually and globally. Considered. The essential factor of the new order must be the free and self-conscious person. No type of economy, already discarding everything it can suppose the capitalist and state system is consubstantial with anarchism. Our goal is to live in freedom and do everything possible so that everyone can enjoy it and enjoy, under equal conditions, how much the land, nature and the solidarity effort of people can provide to each and everyone without distinction. Wide reception of social anarchism. For the same reasons our conception of integral socialism, of democratic socialism is broad and not exhaustive neither unilateral nor uniform in its possibilities and modalities of practical application. Other forms of social organization, whether mutual, collectivist, cooperative, etc., provided that all routes of exploitation are excluded from them. The freedom of experimentation of economic modalities the most just and adequate to satisfy human needs and assure people the maximum of freedom and the greatest well-being, should have an open path in anarchist society, trying, naturally, to make them go common concert with the coexistence of the group and the general system founded on the federative association of free producers and solidarity consumers. Freedom of experimentation. The experimentation and coexistence of modalities of the socializing type, mutualist, anarchist, proudhon, anarchic collectivists, anarchists, Bakunin R. Meller, Libertarian Communist or Anarchic Communism, Anarchists, Kropotkin Malatista, Cooperativists, Not Commercialized, etc. At the local, county, regional or national scale, it may be possible, within the libertarian system, safeguarding the essentially anti-authoritarian anarchic principle, fundamentally autonomous and federalist. And especially if it is understood, as is logically libertarian that human evolution and that of social forms does not stagnate and that no economic structure could be considered definitive and immutable. To always create more freedom, more well-being, more abundance of everything, greater perfection, and the most optimal conditions for the full development of the individual, of the social group, of the human group, such must be the orientation and purpose of anarchist society, of libertarian social and economic organization. Libertarian Social and Economic Sketches. The economy cannot develop without a social base. And whether human being or group exists, society arises, from the same coexistence. Needs are presented, with their unappealable demands, even by the same simple and natural biological order and, manifesting in the general plane, transcending the collective set make people see themselves in the duty of seeking an order or regulatory principle, to do at least compatible with human coexistence itself, whether based on the freely accepted and consciously consented agreement or contract, voluntarily applied. In the anarchist conception, at least in the one that admits the organizing base by free pact, Libertarian communism is the system or structural mechanism that makes the formation and development of society more viable, based on acritical postulates interpreted with lucid realism, without mystification. Of the meaning and content of those. Basis of the new society, the free commune. The cornerstone or living cell of the new libertarian social organization, for us, in addition to the individual, the group, the collectivity. The union is the free commune. The free commune, constituted by each and every one of the citizens, can have the function of general social coordination, in the simply administrative aspect, not of power or political institution but of social service, at the local territorial level. Their functions must conform to those resolutions and decisions that the communal free assemblies themselves have taken by mutual consensus. From the communal organization all authoritarianism and all bureaucracy must be banished. The county, regional and national federations of free communes may be constituted at the general level of a country or a specific geographic and ethnic zone, and confederate internationally. The commune must not concentrate in itself political power, and less military power, which must also disappear at all. Not even revolutionary power. All political power must be abolished and no one must exercise it. Nor should there be economic proprietarism in the commune, 
which makes its geographical and historical term a closed preserve or a fiefdom. Every commune must be open to solidarity, practice it and receive it, based on the principle that all that natural or created or manufactured wealth, all products, tools or material goods, a common heritage and remain at the disposal of all, its usufruct being regulated by the collective rules freely and voluntarily established of the revolutionary union and its functions. The organism that can best ensure the organization of work and its function in the socialist socialist society is their revolutionary syndicalist trade union, made up of free workers from industry, fields, mines, laboratories, and centers. Research and searching, those of technical specialties. The unions, grouped by branch and industry, in local, county, regional, national and international federations. And directly, managing, under their responsible control, factories and workshops, fields, mines, marinas, scientific and technological institutes, they are bodies capable of ensuring the production of all articles and things essential to society and its components, according to the needs that they make themselves felt and present themselves pursuing the objective of creating abundance with the contribution of each one to the common effort, according to their strengths and capacities and without exploitation of anyone or any privilege. All material, economic and technical resources, manufactured articles, agricultural, livestock, fishing products, etc., must be considered and are made available to common, through the appropriate and most suitable agencies, for distribution exchange and the most equitable distribution. The federations of unions may be formed by categories of production, whether industrial, peasant, etc., or public services, postal services, communications, transportation and others. The social revolution, with the disappearance of the bourgeoisie and the capitalist and authoritarian structures, will have to establish a new economic order, which will necessarily imply other modalities of work manufacturing readjustments, professional reconversions, different specialties of production. Neither trade unions by profession or industry shall have political power or property of factory, machinery or manufactured products. Corporatist proprietarism must not be allowed to take root in anarchist society either. Self-management must be based on ensuring the best and the most rational organization of work and the production function controlled by a high sense of conscious and voluntary individual and professional responsibility. The self-management committees or commissions of the factory, company, workshop or producing community will be appointed directly by the personnel employed in them, being subject to periodic renewals and being revocable. Bureaucracy must be banished from committees and everywhere. The same technical or specialized personnel, under any circumstances, should not be given command status. We express ourselves against admitting the principle of all power to the unions, such as granting it, of direction command, to any technical or specialized person, responsibly in charge of a job, who must consider other workers on an equal footing moral and effective, producers, cooperating in the work of a common company at the service of the general good. Distribution and Consumption the purpose of the social organization that we defend and advocate should not be the industrial or commercial benefit or profit, manipulated or monopolized by any group, clan, entity or body, but the common good, within the federation or association of communes free and in solidarity. On the other hand, we understand that the economic forms and mechanisms of anarchist society should not be embedded in a rigid armor in a monolithic regime and immovable structures. Respecting the fundamental principle of non-exploitation, of community of wealth, goods, land, machines and products, everything must be made available and individual and common consumption and use. And so freedom, bread, culture and independence within union and solidarity will be better guaranteed and assured for all. The general coordinated and retail distribution of agricultural and manufactured products may be ensured by consumer associations or federations, based on supply warehouses and wholesale supply, where the production unions and communities may supply and deposit the products, 
and through consumer cooperatives and stores or centers qualified for retail distribution, exempt from all commercialism. Organisms of the revolution, the collectivities, the production collectives, and even the mixed production and consumption groups, especially in agriculture, rural and peasant environments, can also be an important factor between the suitable and effective means of settlement and development of the new economy, as vital organisms. Operating on the principle of free cooperation in the new solidarity economy, without commercialism or concurrence. As a practical and effective expression of living collectivist communist, anarchist, realization, that of the libertarian type collectivities can be offered during the Spanish Revolution, in a given situation of transcendental historical realism, manifesting as efficient organisms to ensure the economic development of a people above all working in concert with the unions and other communal organizations, complementary to each other, and attending to each one, in its defined sphere and respective characteristic, the economic and social needs and functions inherent to the society or community. Social and Economic Councils Among the complementary organizations of utility, by way of advice, information and statistics, technical guidance, Searching for more perfect organizational modalities, local and general coordination, practical lessons derived from the same diverse experiences compared to production and consumption, exploitation and study of the possibilities of economic development and exploitation of new wealth in common, there may be local, county and regional economic councils, leading to the general council of the federated national economy. These economic councils should not have any executive power, but simply an advisory and advisory mission. They may be formed by delegates appointed by the commune, the unions, the collectives, the cooperatives and consumption centers, the technical and cultural organizations. The purpose of the social organization that we defend and advocate should not be industrial or commercial profit or profit, manipulated or monopolized by any group, clan, entity or body but the common good. The members of these councils, which could even be called social and economic councils, will be appointed by the respective bodies and delegated to them, on a renewable and revocable temporary basis. Taking into account the essential, material, productive, related, cultural and artistic needs, etc., among the social and economic councils that could be formed there is that of food, that of housing, that of clothing that of agricultural and livestock production and forestry, mining, fishing, transportation, communications, graphic arts, press and books, the metallurgical and steel industry, water, electricity and motive power, that of the chemical industry, that of the glass and ceramics branch, that of the wood branch, that of construction, that of health, that of culture, arts and recreation, that of science, research and techniques that of warehouses, credits and exchanges, foreign relations, import and export, which, through their local, communal, union, collectivities, cooperatives and autonomous groups branches, without any centralism, from bottom to top, will be intertwined in a general council for the coordination and solidarity of autonomous entities and bodies, without executive powers. The names of the various councils that we list may be different from those that we give, the couplings have more or less breadth, the demarcations by specialty or branch more varied or synthetic than those indicated. And they will always be adopted jointly, between the interested parties, directly, without any imposition. General considerations. When drawing or sketching these modalities or formulas, we do so with the main concern of avoiding authoritarian influences and reminiscences, centralizing, absorbing and monopolizing tendencies in libertarian anarchist or communist society and with the desire to give freedom, autonomy, living, structural, functional, practical content and stimulator of greater progress and ascent improvement. We base the transformative and creative social dynamic energy in man and woman, naturally, in their own conscience, as an integral being in themselves, individually, and as an autonomous unit voluntarily associated with the community as a whole. If, in the stages of transformation and towards the full realization of communism, while industrial and agricultural development have not reached a sufficient degree, for various reasons, 
to create superabundance and free individual acquisition, without hoarding or abuse of all kinds of products, it is considered that a regularization of distribution and consumption within the system of applied socialization, collectivism or incipient communism was not essential, it should be the most rational and just. We are of the same opinion if the convenience or usefulness of a remuneration system is considered, to provide purchasing facilities. We are against him because we fear that the remuneration, if it is not equal, and even so, would fatally fall into injustices, would arouse selfishness and rancor and in the long run would resurrect inequalities. The existence of money, already very controversial in libertarian sociology, is not advisable either in our opinion. And if a monetary sign is established, based on bonds or vouchers, it must not be centralized in a banking type body, but rather, when these vouchers or currency bonds are issued by the communes, internally and in general, they must possess purchasing and interchangeable value in all of them. The accumulation of values of monetary sign, in species or products, the accumulation of whatever nature, on the part of a commune, of a powerful, more important or more prosperous community or company, of a more developed region, of the same way that centralization and monopoly have to be avoided and fought. If a general economic plan becomes necessary to establish, it will be necessary to ensure that the contributing parties or units or whose assistance and resources are required or could be affected, are not sacrificed, and accept it previously because if the general will is imposed and manifested with the omnipotence of an effective and indisputable power, the risk of oppression or injustice, would be engendered and rebellion would emerge as an inevitable defensive reaction. Society must be like a living organism in which all cells or groupings of them, all organs, fulfill their function, to ensure life and health, with the difference that within that social organism of people and manifests autonomously contributing with its own individuality to enrich and vitalize it and with its intelligence, reason and knowledge, to give it consciousness, humanism, harmonious development, creative and upward impulse. The purpose of the social organization that we defend and advocate should not be industrial or commercial profit or profit, manipulated or monopolized by any group, clan, entity or body, but the common good. Far from us is the pretense which would be futile, to define in immutable guidelines, not even in broad strokes and much less in minute detail, the social, ethical and economic basis of anarchism, we do not use the political word for the same reason, because of the same confusion, to which it lends itself, as democracy lends itself. The evolution of history we know that far from following a continuous ascending line, rather the undulating trace and is full of contradictions, and it is through them that the new social and economic forms, and the development of consciousness and consciousness itself, human ethics, are overcome and give way to new forms, structures and awareness of human ethics, are overcome and give way to new forms, structures and conceptions, which also have ephemeral existence, in a perpetual renewal of social life and its forms, permanent creative dynamics of the new imprinting its modulation and its imprint on the realities of each time, in each town and in the world. It is the very dialectic of life that creates those germs that give impetus to progress, passing through the brain, conscience and will of each person and shaping new ephemeral realities in forms. Aware of this, as anarchists, fighting for all the audacious progressive realizers, keeping the revolutionary spirit alive and active, we do not put obstacles or limits to the construction of a free tomorrow, in a continuous process of development and we limit ourselves to these notes around the theme la organization of the economy in an anarchist society or during the revolutionary transition stage towards anarchy, without any exhaustive claim and as a contribution to the common thought and content in the contributions to the libertarian doctrine, without any claim of originality.